Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan. On this episode, we continue our interview with Aran and Aviv, who are the creators of Up to Four Players and Crystal Heart. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the Kickstarter that just launched for Crystal Heart, which is going to be a setting now for Savage Worlds. We need to know a lot about the setting itself, and we need to know a lot more about Savage Worlds, because going into this, Alex and I have really not talked about it on the show, nor were we particularly familiar with it. Luckily, Aran and Aviv are, and they were able to give us quite a bit of insight in that regard. Please enjoy. We've never actually had someone on our show talk about Savage Worlds before. I know you guys didn't um, create Savage Worlds, but... Oh, no. <laughs> could you give us a, a little bit of um, info on what that's like for us? Because we're not familiar with it. Sure. Uh, Aviv, you just ran a game, Savage Worlds, a few days back. How about you give the intro? Will do. Actually, Savage World has just just now finishing uh, an incredibly successful Kickstarter for their next edition. So maybe some of the things I'm going to say are not going to be true for much longer, but I think the core rules have not changed much. Oh, so, that's one of the brilliant things about Savage Worlds. Every edition is basically the previous one, only a bit better. It's not like in D&D, for example, where you can't really play a character from this edition with any of the previous ones. Mm. But in a way, it's just version 5 point whatever of the same thing in Savage Worlds for like 15 years now. It's just taking what you've built on and making it better and refining it. Making it better. Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. So the main thing about Savage Worlds is that it's a generic system. Um, it's not like D&D where you get a whole world, specifically a fantastic world, um, that you have to kind of have to play in. With Savage Worlds, it's just a set of rules that you can apply to any genre, to any world that you want. And there are loads of worlds, loads of setting books. Um, Crystal Heart is one of them. Hmm. And they cover every genre and every world, fantasy, sci-fi, um, Wild West, uh, Cthulhu, everything you want, you'll probably find it existing already for Savage Worlds. The system is... I think it's super simple. I mean, it's probably not really that simple, but maybe it's just the way that Elan has, has introduced me to it that has made me see it as kind of, oh, okay, yeah, that's super simple. So instead of, um, well, D20-based systems where you roll one die and then you add your attribute or skill or whatever to it, in Savage Worlds, each of your skills and each of your attributes um, has a die. So if you're uh, okay at something, you get a d4. And if you're amazing at something, you get a d12. And you roll that one, and you just need to pass four. That's all you need. Super simple. My favorite rule, my absolute favorite rule about Savage Worlds is that dice explode. So if your die lands on the highest result, you roll it again, and you edit the results. And that is, that can just make things explode amazingly. Uh, yes. Incredible successes where there was any no like no chance for it happening um unfortunately it could also happen to your enemies but that you know that's yeah. just how it is Oof. um <laughs> yeah. also because you are uh, big damn heroes you get to roll a wild die so just just a d6 that goes with any any die roll always just to m give you a better chance of succeeding whatever it is you're trying to do it's one of the strange things in savage world it took me a long time to get used to this Imagine that in D&D, um, &D, you would roll a D20, and then on the side, you would also roll a D10. And uh, you check them separately, you don't add them. There's just a chance that you might succeed thanks to a different thing. Not your ability, not your uh, whatever, just a D10, because you're just the because... hero of the story. Yeah. yeah, this is your story. Hmm. You deserve Weird. a better chance than just the mooks. But do I, do I deserve that chance? Some yes, people would yes, say no. I do, think Nathan. we do. Yeah. Oh, so okay. on, on the flip side of that, is there a chance to not succeed because of a dice? If you, it's, it's almost like a luck mechanic to me. But what if you have someone who's like unlucky? The main uh, problem with Savage Worlds is modifiers because the numbers are very low. Even a minus one on your roll is, can be disastrous. I mean, it really depends on what you're rolling, but 
Uh, a minus four is basically saying you're not going to make it unless something explodes, quite likely. Or you're the best, like D12, etc. So, I mean, it's not the same as saying plus 10 in D&D, for example, because you will not be consistently getting... the th- ah, This is getting into statistics. But... <laughs> <laughs> but it is definitely more luck, luck-based than yes, D&D. Yes, yes. I you see. get more exaggerated results in mm. an unpredictable manner. But that's part of the fun of Savage World. Oh, okay. And to kind of mitigate that, there's also a, um, a mechanic called bennies. Each player gets usually three bennies, just three tokens at the start of every session um, that you can just spend one to re-roll uh, an unsuccessful roll. And that is super powerful because it's... You can see in players um, just the, the, the wheels in their brain trying to figure out if this is an important enough role. So they, I, I, do I need to spend a penny on this or do I not? Um, but it does give you the chance to, ah, this was really important and it failed just because of stupid luck. I want to try it again. Well, that's nice. It seems like a very forgiving system in that way. I don't know. It's really lethal it can be really lethal because it has no hit points and it doesn't matter how powerful or strong you get you will always only have three wound levels uh, by the way uh, people that are not amazing uh, super powerful heroes like us only get one wound level and oh. because dice explode you can get like uh, for example four or five wound levels in a single hit and a goblin yep. can do it the, the smallest goblin can get an explosion out of nowhere and basically kill you. Mm-hmm. There are several ways to prevent it, but you should, you need to know what to do. You need to keep some pennies. Yeah. You soak the roll in some way, mm-hmm. and you need to be aware of the type of game you are playing. Right. This, yes. is, this is a Paul Pie adventure game. This is a thing that you play Indiana Jones with this. Yeah. Indiana Jones doesn't have hit points. No. <laughs> and none of the people that he attacks have hit points. Right. He can overcome everything that's in his way, but sometimes, out of nowhere, something horrible is going to happen, or out of nowhere, he's going to make that amazing roll or whatever, and it's not a 5% chance. It's not a 1 in 20 chance. I, I had uh, been playing in a system that actually used uh, exploding dice uh, called Open Legend, and um, mm. yes, yes. We, we almost went with Open Legends, by the way. I was the... Instead of Savage Worlds. My bona fide, I was the uh, GM for their official live play podcast for, for oh. as long as that lasted. Uh, but one of the people who was part of the, the Open Legion had posted, they, they had one of those cases where they had a, a withered skeleton. And the withered skeleton, like, had... Tw- it, the dice exploded, like, twice for it. <laughs> And it, like, killed one of their player characters. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, yeah. wow. Well, that worked out well. <laughs> good, it, good it happens. You. you can't... I really like Open Legend for the power system that they have there. It's really mm. intriguing for me. And we almost went with that because of the power system. Right. Uh, but I'm, I'm interested because, you know, in Open Legend, they do use hit points. So uh, the, yes. the wound system is really interesting. So... Like how how did the, like if I started crewing because I'm going to I start accruing those wounds, what does that actually do to my character? Oh, you don't want even a single one. Oh, oh no, oh, well, no, it's horrible. I'm gonna yes, have all. It's the Just I'm telling you right now. Every, every, you get three every wound single levels. wound. Yeah. Um, gives you a minus one to everything you do. Oh, everything, even even trying to to heal yourself or. You know, get out of that shaken state you get into once you're you're hit. Mm. Everything. Just, you have a wound, it's a minus one to everything, and then you get another one, it's a minus two to everything. And minus two in Savage Worlds is loads. Mm. Uh, So just, yeah, try try not to get hurt, man. There there are ways, there are ways. You can use bennies to soak damage. Uh, You can try to be clever Mm. and use all of the bonuses. There are many interesting combat maneuvers you can do. Simple things yeah. that you can do, yeah. and you probably should. <laughs> right. You should fight smart, not hard. That's always a good uh, advice in general. <laughs> but, yeah, in yeah. life as well. It reminds me of the Warhammer 40k RPGs, where wounds, light wounds are easy to heal, but heavy wounds will really impede your 
ability to do a lot, and yeah. it's really hard to heal from, which is nice for an action-paced game. Yes. But it also becomes very brutal very fast. We played Warhammer Fantasy 3rd Edition, which is a brilliant game. It was the forefather for Genesis by Fantasy V Games. And it had sort of hit point like thing, but that sort of hit point like thing was you can recover it very quickly. The problem was critical wounds because they would never go away. Mm. So if you when you get one or two of them, they first of all each of them has a unique um, uh, hindrance attached to them. Like from now on, your left leg doesn't work correctly, so you can't run or whatever. And it takes ages to to get rid of them. And I like it because I really enjoy ongoing injuries. I think they are great. <laughs> I'm going to have to agree with you. Fantasy Flight, for all the issues with the Warhammer RPGs uh, being clunky, those critical hit charts <laughs> were in-depth and amazing. Really? I only oh, started yeah. playing a bit of Rogue Trader, but uh, that percentile, I couldn't. It wasn't for me. Yeah, it can be a little bit pain in the butt to wrap your head around that one. Uh, yeah, so so wounds are bad, basically, is what yes. I'm getting out of that. And it's <laughs> yes. a negative feedback loop that I don't want to get into. Exactly. Exactly. Gotcha. That actually brings us to, finally, talking about a little bit about Crystal Heart as a role-playing game, which is coming to Kickstarter uh, this month. And uh, so... In terms of a campaign setting uh, inside of Savage Worlds, what are we looking at? What, what can we expect from Crystal Heart as a, as, as a product, as a thing I can play with my own player characters? Well, first, there's going to be a ton of art, obviously, oh, beautiful. in it, and all of it by Aviv. Aviv, did you do the, uh, the, do you draw the webcomic too? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the artist and Alan is the writer. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So the art is inspired essentially by the, the webcomic, or is it a little different? Uh, it's going to be pretty much the same style. Obviously, the, there will be some changes because it's not uh, uh, an ongoing comic. It's not sequential art. It's just single pieces. Um, sure. So hopefully it means I can put some more detail and thought into it because then I don't have to redraw it for the next 30 pages. Um, okay. But in terms of style, it is going to be fairly the same thing, yes. It's really powerful to have, as a game designer, it's really powerful to have um, a graphic designer working with you in such a way, I mean, and she's, out, she's a player, she's part of the story, of, she knows what's going on in the webcomic, obviously, because she can be really useful. Art is such a powerful way to convey information. It can be really sure. useful, and I'm looking forward to using that in, in some way in the in the final product. And we're going to have, well, generally speaking, Savage World settings have a basic sort of structure because there are so many of them. <laughs> There's a, a, yes. a specific structure that works uh, and we will be imitating it mostly. It begins by providing you everything you need to create a character, describing what's different. M most of the book is what's different about this setting than the original Savage World all of the edges and hindrances that we are going to create, and actually already created, um, having a mentor, uh, working as a team for an organization, what does it mean mechanically? What does it mean during character creation? Um, then we continue into describing scene, the organization, and then we continue to describing the world. And in all of the descriptions, we are focusing, obviously, on what's interesting to play in this. Uh, what is cool in this land? What, what sort of adventure hooks can we find here? What is the theme of this land? Uh, in, right. or scene, what sort of uh, annoying things can scene do to you, the player? Here's a table of uh, scene has a demand for you. Let's roll in it and see what happens. Stuff like that. And obviously we're going to have a lot of crystals and some... Sure. Well, it's not monsters. We'll have a bestiary, but the world that we convey don't have monsters. It has unusual animals. Oh, And okay. we're going to have some of those. And so also... it's kind of like Australia. <laughs> yes, yes, actually, yes. That's, that's... Yeah. 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 And yeah. part of the thing uh, about this world and about crystals is that when they are in the wild, they have... Uh, they're called feral crystals, and they do strange stuff to their environment. Yes. So... Something that would be a normal, nice, uh, fluffy beast 
uh, normally is around a crystal and suddenly it becomes a monstrous ball of fur complete with all the teeth, all the claws, um, just because it's near a crystal. Oh. Generally speaking, we separate the bestiary into three parts. There are people and there are a lot of, uh, we only have humans, but you know, there are quite a lot of types of humans and things that they want to do to you. Mm. And <laughs> all, we with have, you. all with you, all with you. Not in the bestiary, though. Um, <laughs> we will have animals, which is things like uh, the white horse, which is a giant squirrel. Um, of course. But, of course. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah, I got that from the description, yeah. <laughs> and uh, leviathans that are used as sort of, how, how do you say um, an animal that does walk for you? A walk animal? Is that a thing? A pack <laughs> animal? Uh, something like that. Yeah. But they do all sorts of things for you. But they are giant leviathans. And finally, we'll have these feral, corrupted versions of all sorts of stuff because that's uh, cool and they can have magical abilities. Of course. <laughs> that's the best part. Yes. So the, the main quest lines are sort of revolving around the idea that I, I have to seek out those crystals and also fix kind of the things that are happening with that crystal and how it influences its environment. We separate, oh, we separate everything apparently, but yes, we separate <laughs> the campaign, the Crystal Heart campaign, the classic Crystal Heart campaign to like three parts. Okay. You start by novi being novice characters, which is um, something that um, Savage World has. It has five ranks, novice, seasoned, veteran, heroic, and legendary. And you start by being novice agent, and you go around the world, the world following a specific route that was given to you by the people of Sin saying, there are crystals along this route, get them. So that's adventure after adventure after adventure. Mm -hmm. And they are very episodic, meaning we are not going to follow every part of the way. We are going to start and end. Well, that's, that's my suggestion, of course. You do whatever you want to do. But start and end wherever there's a crystal or something interesting and play that. Mm -hmm. Then, after you graduate the season and whatever, you've already started seeing a grander picture, something like a conspiracy going on or something from the bygone age or something was in the background during these adventures. Mm. And now you are going to go out into the world and try to find out what it is. You finished the route. Now you're basically free to go and do something as long as sin allows it. Ah. And when you finish with that, you become a free agent. You can do whatever you want you're a veteran or a heroic or something really powerful. And by now, that conspiracy or whatever is coming to full fruition and you'll have to fight it and you'll end the campaign when you defeat or get defeated by whatever it is that was happening behind the scenes this whole time. Ah. That's how I imagine a campaign for Crystal Heart. And we will provide whatever tools I can to GMs to make sure that this can actually work. And that kind of leads you to the Kickstarter uh, yep. for it. Uh, so what can we expect from the Kickstarter? First of all, like, what, what is your goal for the Kickstarter? To get the book out. Okay, well, that's a good goal. <laughs> but <laughs> but what, what, what is the funding level that you're, you're trying to get to? Well, we look around to compare ourselves to other Savage Worlds. And first, most Savage Worlds books, I think, are in U.S. dollar. Because... Uh, not many people play Savage World outside of the US, which is so annoying to me. We, we are, of course, in the UK, in London. Right. Um, we'll be using pounds then, the British pound. Yes. And I can't give you final numbers because I yeah, don't no, I remember. Think if you go to the, to the Kickstarter page, you'll be able to see the, ah, yeah, obviously, the yeah. minimum goal that yes. uh, we've, we've, we went with, sure. uh, which is set to fund the book itself with a certain level of art, not, yes. not yes. the full range of artwork that we envision for it. Okay. But that's going to be one of the earlier stretch goals. So hopefully we get that too. Okay. We have the, the advantage of having a big community already, thanks to the mm -hmm. webcomic. Sure. So we're hoping to convince them that this book is worth it, especially those of them that don't play role-playing games. We really want them to try and play role-playing games. We've released, we've released a free starter set for them oh. to play role-playing games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and it would be really helpful if they invest because then we can get to stretch goals like, yeah, having the full book with all the art that we really want mm -hmm. to have and having... Oh my god, I would love to have an action deck. <laughs> Savage mm. World uses uh, cards sometimes for all sorts of things. 
So having our own custom deck of cards, it's going to be amazing. A custom deck of cards. That that does oh, yes. fascinating. I, I want those cards. Yeah. <laughs> so do we. The Ace of Spades. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's... I, I envision the deck of cards having crystals on them. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That does make sense. There's also yes. a thing called an adventure deck that Savage Worlds have. It's a 52 deck of cards. And each of them has a special thing that happens. And the players get them at the start of the game. They get like one or two each. And they can use them during the game. And they have things like um, you, when you arrive to a new place, there's already someone that you know there. And you can talk to them and they can give you information. Or when you finish someone off, use this card and everyone around is super intimidated by you because of how amazing you were when you finished and off. Mm. And it's really yes. cool. It's so awesome. Uh, we love it. It's we played an amazing all the accessory. Time. And we, we yes. so want to do this for Crystal Heart. Yes. Um, so yes, you know, the more money we get, the more cool things we can do. Excellent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea of uh, integrating cards into it. It feels like it gives you a, a lot more player choice by being able to, to work with that. It gives the players some narrative control that I think they really, they, it's very limited. You can do this thing, mm -hmm. but it's so empowering. So the wounds are still going to be in, uh, in Crystal Heart, I imagine, from Sa uh, Savage Worlds. We're changing very little. The main okay. thing that we actually, I think, create, I mean, obviously we create the crystals. Sure. That's a new thing for Savage Worlds, but it uses the basic concept. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, we barely touch the system. It works really well. There's not a lot that we need to do. <laughs> don't, don't, don't fix. If it ain't broke. Fix it. Yeah, don't fix what ain't exactly. broke. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, so a lot of it is actually creating the narrative part of it. Yes. And, well, there's a thing called setting rules in Savage Worlds, which is not exactly fixing, but more of, well, in this world, Things work like this because we want you to have this experience. Sure. So, for example, we have a setting rule that says that you're probably not going to die. You, you might Excellent. actually, we, we might change this when, in the final book. But currently, <laughs> currently, there's a setting book that says you're probably not going to die because when you're supposed to die, you instead not die, but something <laughs> bad happens. <laughs> um, or st stuff like that. But yes, everything that's not rules based, and there's not, a, as you said, there's, there's not a lot mm -hmm. that's rules based, um, is going to be hopefully, I don't want to say setting material because whenever I say that, I'm thinking back to the um, books from the, the Red Box of DD where they provided you with 52 pages of the politics of this land and economy. <laughs> I don't care about any of that. I care about interesting things that can happen to my characters. Sure. So that's what we'll be aiming to do. That is uh, terrific. Do the uh, characters that are in the comic, do they show up as like NPCs in the role-playing game? No. No? Oh, right. No. <laughs> they're, they're, they're mine. <laughs> they're yours. <laughs> they're mine. They're not yours. <laughs> no, you cannot. No. You cannot have them. Yeah. No, really. But there's a reason for that. Because we don't want to say what the character sheets are like because oh. then we commit to specific numbers ah. and we can't then change it later mm. for whatever mm. story reasons in the yeah, story. Yeah, then it's canon. But Aviv, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We don't want to canonize them right. too okay. much. Mm -hmm. Then the players will, uh, the readers, but Aviv had a brilliant idea instead and the starter set comes with four iconic characters that will be the main characters of the book. It's like Tordek and Lydia from D and D. Exactly, that's exactly like that. Yeah, so they wouldn't be main characters in the same way that the comic has main characters because they're not following a specific story so so much. But yeah, whenever we need to show an example of something happening, we'll use these four. Actually, five. There's going to oh, be five. Five. Yeah. five people from the five lands. Uh, it's very very convenient. Uh, just looking through some of the supporting cast, I want to know the character that Mrs. Uh, Studebaker makes. Yes. <laughs> we, we had a thought, maybe we will do a one shot. Maybe we'll have some of the supporting cast from previous years come along and play something, but <laughs> that's unlikely to happen anything. Right. Right. Uh, I just, I just think that like, there's gotta be a character that smacks me over the head with a cane or something that feels like a, yeah, like a, that's good, her. That's her. Yeah. Sounds good. 
She she gives me all the wound points immediately. <laughs> yeah, I get all the wounds immediately. My, one thing I think that is, uh, I, I hope is interesting, is the fact that we teach Savage Worlds in the comic. Hmm. Because mechanics is so important when you tell a story about role-playing games. Because the rules are, I don't say everything, but they are instrumental to the experience. Mm. That we had to explain Savage Worlds. So, in a way, in the webcomic, we are confined to what we've already described, and we do add more and more rules as we go along, mm -hmm. but also get a bit... I mean, we, we no longer show every role. We can just show the results or make an assumption that there was a role somewhere in the background. Mm -hmm. We do, however, keep showing new things. And one of the things, for example, that we've showed was interludes, which is an awesome mechanic that we really like from Savage Worlds, mm -hmm. where when you have some time, like downtime, you sit with the other players. Maybe the GM wants us to have some time pass, and to present that, he says, okay, let's do something in the real world that takes some time, and that will make us feel like some time passed in the fictional world. So one of you guys will now tell a short story about their character, something from their past. And you take a card, Pick a card, any card from the deck, and the suit tells you what sort of story you're going to tell about your character. And that's a mechanic that I really, really like. It gives you an opportunity to add something cool, short. You, you're going to talk for like three minutes, not too long. Mm -hmm. And it gives you some constraint because it tells you, yes, this has to be a story about a victory because you pulled a diamond. Or this has to be a story about passion because you pulled a heart. Mm. And I think it's awesome. It's a great way to create mini stories during the campaign we are going to use some of this in the crystal heart book as well uh, because i really want to right. and, <laughs> and there are many open places where we need to fill up with stories like your relationship with sin mm -hmm. do you enjoy working for sin sin is really big in your life what, what do you feel about it where do you stand compared to sin right. well let's draw a card and see what happens yeah yeah i i really like that because it adds narrative incentive to players and characters but it does it mechan mechanically and almost organically yes yeah and that's really neat like in my mind i feel like you could have the suits represent something and you could have the low side of the suit represent like a failure or a, a, a loss or something that wasn't yeah. that great and then the higher cards in the suit could be like woo total victory you got you got an ace or maybe an ace could be either or Something like that. Mm. That's interesting. Maybe. There, there's also a problem with Savage Worlds. Savage Worlds is about being fast, furious, and fun. So you always want to add a bit of more, bit more mechanic to something that's happening because you can and it seems awesome, but maybe you shouldn't because <laughs> you want the story to continue. You want the game to carry on. For example, where do you draw the line? What is low? Is five low or is six low? Uh, do we need to now open the book to check? <laughs> Because then it takes, uh, it's another rule we need to know. Let's just draw something, tell something, and continue. That's, that's how <laughs> Savage Worlds usually thinks. Fair. The less time Fair you spend on uh, figuring out the mechanics, uh, the faster it is, and the more fun you're having. I'll give you another example um, related to this, and it's a thing that I'm still, I'm still I'm sure of. Um, when you have some very powerful crystals, when you draw a heart during combat because you always draw during combat then something cool happens to you during this specific turn i think it's really awesome but it's something that you need to keep track of it's something that you need to to remember especially if you just switched your crystal mm. uh, do we really need this is it fun i'm not sure we'll have to play test this a lot yeah that's where play testing comes in yeah, completely oh so much play testing <laughs> so <laughs> much well, uh, so my quest to uh, find Crystal Hearts uh, is going to be going on to Kickstarter. Uh, November through uh, when in December? I think we, we're ending it on the 11th of December. Okay. Oh, really? Nice. I did. I wasn't sure. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're beginning in the 20 and then three weeks. Okay. Like that. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. So until December 11th, you have the opportunity to, uh, to get uh, on Kickstarter and uh, secure your copy uh do you have any kind of uh, idea of when you're going to be able to actually get those books delivered after the kickstarter i don't think anyone running a kickstarter fully knows that until after it succeeds 
we have very, very vague idea. Okay. First of all, the book is not ready yet. We're still working on it. Okay. So it's going to be at least second half of 2019. Sure. Let's say last quarter. Okay. Uh, especially for the physical products to ship and everything, because from the moment the book is finished, it's three more months until everything ships. Ah, uh, yes. At least. At least. Mm-hmm. So we'll have some estimated costs and stuff. Uh, estimated costs, obviously, it's not going to be estimated. It's going to be costs. Right. We're going to have some costs <laughs> right. and estimated delivery dates. Um, but, um, yeah. but we are always open to discussion. We are really cool with people just asking us directly and stuff like that. Right. We'll try to be as transparent as we can afford to be. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, if you end up uh, unlocking, like, all the stretch goals, there's going to be a lot of art. <laughs> and, yes. And, and you're going to have to draw that, aren't you? Uh, I, I may have, yeah, I may have dug a hole that I can't get myself out of, but, uh, yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, it's... No, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. I like it's ton- it's a ton of work, but it's all really cool work, and I want to see all those products out yeah. there. So hopefully, yes, yes. yeah, uh, that's that's terrific. Um, and also, thank you for telling me more about uh, Savage Worlds. I wasn't even aware the Savage Worlds was like a generic system. I actually thought that there was literally a Savage World, and I had to go to mm. the Savage World. So that's what you get from the name. Yeah, that's it's, what uh, I got. Uh, I get it. Yeah, I did not. Mm-hmm. I did not know. Oh, it's there's not happy go lucky worlds. Nathan. No, it's not. Maybe we should. You know what, Alex? Maybe we should make a happy go lucky setting for Savage Worlds, and it's just people just hanging out, right. and we can <laughs> and we can call it Comfortable Worlds. It will be. Yeah. yeah. That's the next project. Sounds great. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> let's do that. It'll be a the comfort in. Mundane worlds. That sounds great. This world. Yeah. The new was, world. Yeah, yeah. Water world. Oh, no, they did that one. Oh, no, no. They, yeah. Yeah, that didn't work out so well. So uh, I have a crystal heart, and Alex has a crystal heart, and I feel that now we all have a little bit of crystal in our heart. And you might need to see a doctor about that. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> Yeah, you really do. Um, Aviv Aran, uh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, telling us, much, Nathan, oh right. yeah, t- telling us all about that. Yes. Uh, now, if uh, folks were interested in, uh, you know, getting more information about up to four players about Crystal Heart, uh, is there a place that they can go on the internet? Uh, so they can go to up to four players dot com. That's our website, or directly to up to four players dot com slash Crystal Heart. That'll get them straight to the Kickstarter, where they can just, you know, read all about us there. Uh, and so definitely check that out. Uh, it should be probably up when you're hearing this. So worthwhile. Uh, now, Alex, awesome. Alex, out of curiosity, yes. if uh, people wanted to know more about uh, Delve or other Delve related things, where could they go? You can find more information about Delve over at DelveCast.com. Yes, and you can find all sorts of things there. You can even find a, an episode of uh, Orbital where uh, an alien tries to lead three other characters I came up with in a uh, generic campaign setting. I'll probably try to link that at some point, too. That went Perfect. as well as you could possibly hope. Uh, <laughs> you can find Attempting to Play, all that good stuff over there. Uh, please check out our Patreon, uh, and thank you to our Shiny Level patrons, Bonnie Ainsworth and Dom Perry. If uh, they were trying to find uh, the two of you, Iran, Aviv, uh, on any kind of social media, or if they were looking for more information about up to four players on Twitter, any of those, uh, is there a, a way that they can get to you from, from those outlets? Oh, definitely. Uh, they can also just look for at N-N-E-S-K for me. Okay. And I am Aviv All on Twitter, and uh, they can also look for up to four players on Twitter, Facebook, even Google+, Plus for as long as it may survive. Instagram, wherever there is social, you can try to look for us there. Okay, excellent. Uh, you can also find us on uh, those platforms. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited. And the show is at Delve Podcast. And as always, you can always find the show on iTunes and Google Play. And please rate and review and subscribe. I love to have stars. They're sort of like crystals, but for a digital medium. They're, I, mm. I need five crystals, but just crystal stars. Uh, and again, I just want to thank Aran and Aviv for coming on and uh, telling us all about up to four players and Crystal Heart and Savage Worlds and just getting me learned. Thank you both. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. you 
<laughs> and uh, from all of us here at Delve, uh, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, Alex, did you have any other questions that I haven't covered? One of when will my hiccups go away? Okay. Well, that, I don't know. December 1st. December 1st. <laughs> I hope to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way before that. <laughs> well, after after the Kickstarter is over on December 11th, magically, your hiccups will go away. Your your hic- mm-hmm. your hiccups are lasting exactly for the the duration of the of the Kickstarter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> terrific. I am at Citanium. I am at EXP Limited, and the show is at Del. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> And the show is at Dell Podcast. Yeah, that's that's right. So you can this check is out why we do editing and posts. This is why we do editing <laughs> oh, and posts yes. for funny. for <laughs> Alex's hiccup and peanut butter addiction. Um. <laughs>